In this coding exercise, we are asked to do something a little bit different than normal. So right here, it's saying that we need to implement something that can reverse letters, and that's incredibly easy in Ruby. However, there's a little caveat. It says that we need to reverse the letters of a string without using the reverse method. So the reverse method, if you've never seen it, looks like this and you can call it on a string. So I can say reverse, run this code, and you'll see that it reverses all of the characters in the string. So that is very nice and easy. The point of this exercise is not to recreate the reverse method. Instead, it's to learn more about strings and we're going to recreate the method in order to learn how strings work. So the first thing we're gonna do, because we can see right here that we're calling this method alt reverse on the string. That tells me one thing right away. It's that we're gonna use monkey patching and we're going to open up the string class because that allows us to do things like have the method called and passed on the object, which in this case for our test example is hi there. And what we're expecting is for at the end for it to say hi there just with all of the characters completely backwards. So that is something that if you've never done this before, it's a really good exercise because it will teach you a lot about the string class and how you can manipulate it in order to change its behavior. So first and foremost, we can create this method. It's called alt reverse. And for right now, I'm gonna leave it completely empty because I wanna talk about a few attributes of strings that you may or may not have known about in Ruby. So I'm gonna create just a test string here. I'm gonna call it test string and store it inside a str variable. So let's talk about a few things we can do with strings. First, we can add two strings and to do this, I usually like to use the shovel operator. So here, if I add this onto the string, if I run this code, you'll see that it has test string and then it appends ASDF on top of it. That's how we can add to a string. Now, additionally, there's some other things that we can do with strings, such as grabbing the string length. So now I can do string.length and if I run this code, you'll see the string length is 16 characters long. And let's take a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It does count empty spaces just like regular characters, which is perfectly fine. For the purposes of our reverse method, we actually want to keep the spaces. So that is fine. So those are two things. One is how to add to strings. The other is how to capture the string length. We are going to need both of those things in order to build this feature. And there is one more item, and this is something that may not be quite as intuitive if you've never done it before, but we can actually capture the actual values of a string by using this bracket syntax. So if I run this, it returns S. And so if you've ever done this for arrays, then this is pretty much the same exact behavior. So I passed in two, which means that if we start counting, it's gonna be zero, one, two. And it's this S right here, that's the two character. Now if I come back here and swap this out to eight, and then run this code, you'll see it's i, which if you count on the string, that is the index of eight for strings. So I can tell you that everything that you need in order to be able to accomplish this exercise is within these four lines of code here at the bottom. One is being able to select a specific character. Another is to grab the full length of the string, and this one is to append onto it, and the last one's pretty basic, it's just assigning it to a variable. 
If you have never done this before and you're still curious, I highly recommend that you pause the video and go and try to implement this on your own using these four items. Then you can come back and see the way that I've implemented it. So if you are coming back, then I'm gonna leave all of these here just so we can kind of have them as a frame of reference. The first thing we're going to do is we need some place to store our newly reversed string. So I'm going to create a variable called reverse string. I'm gonna set it equal to just an empty string, just like this. Now with that in place, now I want to store how long the string is. This is gonna be very important because we need the ability to iterate over the string and grab the characters, but we need to know how many characters to iterate over. So grabbing the string length is very important. So I'm gonna say string length. This is gonna be equal to self.length, but this is where it's kind of important, minus one. Now, why do we have to do minus one? Let's take a little bit of a jog down memory lane right here. I'm gonna save this and run it again. So here, you can see that we have 16 characters. Inside of the string, as we've counted here, it has 16 characters. However, our array index is not 16, it actually ends at 15 because remember, and it's not really an array, we'll treat it as a collection of characters, but you can think of it like being an array. So T here starts as zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, all the way down to 15. So even though we have 16 characters, what is important to us right now is actually knowing the index value. So knowing where to look up inside of the string to find where those values are. So that is gonna be our, we can almost call it like our smart string length because it knows the position of our items or it's going to be able to tell us the position of our items instead of the total number of characters. So with that in place, now I can say string length dot down to, and what down to does in Ruby is it allows you to start at one point and then go down to another value. So in this case, we wanna count down to zero. So in our case right here, for our RSpec test, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. We have eight characters, and if you count the values, it goes from index zero to index seven right here. So what we're saying is, I want you to start at index seven, and I want you to iterate down to index zero. So that is going to be what we need there. And then I'm gonna call each do, and we'll give this value L, just you can give it any block variable you want. I'm just doing it because I want this to stand for letter. So now what we can do is we can pipe in our reverse string, or I should say pipe to our reversed string. And here we need to say reversed and then string. And now remember how I talked about the shovel operator. We're going to pass this into the reverse string and we're going to send not L because remember L is just the index. L is like saying this. L is like saying uh, zero, one, two, three, but we're doing it backwards. So the way this is gonna work is it's going to be seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So it's gonna go and count down like that. So we don't want the value of L. What we want is the value of self.L. And what that is going to give us is, if you look down at the very bottom here, when I use the bracket syntax, remember how I was grabbing the characters based off of their index value? Well, because we have access to the index value right here, with our L, this gives us our index, self represents whatever string we're working on. So in the case of our example here, it gives us 
hi there. This is this is what self is. Remember, whenever we are opening up another class, whenever we say self, we're talking about the value of whatever it's working on. And then we're just saying, I want you to add this to our reverse string. And then the last thing that we have to do is simply return the reverse string. And that's all we're going to have to do. Let's take our string here and I'm going to delete all this. Let's take a really quick look at what this is going to do in an iterative format. The first time it goes through the list, it is going to attend, uh, append it. Remember, we start with an empty string, so it's going to be empty. First time through the list, it's going to come up here and it's going to say, OK, because we're starting at the index, which is whatever the last one is. Remember, we did string length minus one. So in this case, it's going to take G and it's going to say, hey, I want to append G to the empty string. And then our string is no longer going to be empty. It is now going to be equal to G. Then it's going to iterate again and it's going to say N and it's going to add N on top of it. And it's going to just keep on going exactly like that. So if everything there is accurate, we should be able to type string alt reverse and I'm going to save it, run this file and there you go. It reversed that perfectly. So that is how you can reverse letters in Ruby without using the reverse method. And for formality's sake, we are going to test this out. January 15th, let's run it. One example, zero failures. So great job, you created or recreated the reverse method in Ruby.